the people of Egypt elected their first democratic president, and after one year, they discovered the catastrophe they were fooling, and they decided to oust their president down. Millions went out, chanted their old slogan, the people won't, the regime down. The Egyptian army is nothing but a part of the people. The army decided to support the people's demands and helped in guaranteeing a smooth transition of power. The Muslim Brotherhood refused to leave power. They sat in Rabah Square and threatened the people of killing. <laughs> Since then, Obama's administration ignored the will of Egyptians as well as all reasons led to the new uprising. The United States strongly condemns the steps that have been taken by Egypt's interim government and security forces. We deplore violence against civilians. We support universal rights essential to human dignity, including the right to peaceful protest. On the same level, Western media wasn't any better. They followed the same track, describing the new uprising as a coup d'etat, supporting the peaceful Muslim Brotherhood demonstrations under the name of God. countries decided to take the people's side. The Russian bear, the strategic enemy of the United States of America, was the first but not the last, as well as some other countries who possess a political weight in the region, decided to back up the people's side, like Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Bahrain and Jordan. Since then, rumors have been spread about Malik Obama the half-brother of the American President Barack Obama and his involvement with the Muslim Brotherhood, in which Malik is said to be the executive secretary of the Islamic Dawah organization, IDO, a group created by the government of Sudan, which is considered by the United States a terrorist state. Those reasons and more continue to explain why is Obama's administration supporting terrorist groups? It's even raising a new question. Was America at any time seriously against terrorism?